morning, everyone. Good morning. Parang tulog pa yung iba. Good morning po. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So are you having a blessed day today? Amen. Are you having a blessed... Did you have a blessed week last week? Parang walang, walang na, wala bang blinness si Lord last week? Sa lahat ng blinness ni Lord last week, pwede ba pumalakpak para kay Lord ng malakas? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we had a wonderful week. I also had a wonderful week. And it's all because of God's presence. And yes, next week, it's uh, fast approaching. It's our Holy Week. And if you have no plans, if you have no vacation next week, you're free to attend our concerts, our events at Church of God. That's Marinas, as said by Jasper. So the Go Deep six-hour praise and worship, you're all free and welcome to attend there. Amen. So once again, I'm very blessed to be here in the house of God. Are you blessed to be here in God's house? Amen. I'm also blessed to be with you. You're part of the family. I love this family. I love the Church of God family. And I'm blessed to be with all of you today. And you know what? Before I proceed with God's Word, who here uh, watches the NBA? May mga nanonood ba ng NBA? May mga NBA fans ba dito? Yes, yeah, so marami nanonood. Or kung hindi NBA, meron bang PBA fans? Fans ng PBA, fans si James Yap. But I would just like to talk first about the NBA. Why? In the NBA, it's a basketball league in the United States and all the best players of the world are playing in this game, in the National Basketball Association. And you know what? It's very hard to, to enter this league. It's one story. It's a hard story on how to enter it para makapasok lang. So I've not heard of any uh, popular basketball player in the Philippines who was able to play in the league, who was able to play in the NBA. Not even James Yap was able to play here. But you know what? It's also another story for us to finish wonderfully in this game. So for example, do you know this guy? Do you know Stephen Curry? Can you see Stephen Curry? What an inspiration, what a beautiful basketball player, so talented and so amazing. And you know what? He started in the NBA in 2009. That's the year that he started. But you know what? In the year 2011 to 2012, he had an injury. So this, this crippled him. This stopped him from playing good. He was, not, uh, he was not confident with his legs because he had an ankle injury. He had a leg injury and he was not be able to go to the championship. He was not able to play his best game in the, in the basketball. Why? Because he had an injury. He had a very big problem. He had a very big challenge in his career. But you know what? Miraculously, his leg got healed. His ankles got healed. And last year, he was the world champion. He and his team was the world champion sa NBA. Nanalo po ang Golden State sa championship ng NBA. And what am I telling you today? It's one thing to start in the NBA, but it's another difficult thing to finish strong, to finish and accomplish what you've started. And once again, we're going to open our Bibles in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 to 9. And for the past two weeks, who is the Bible character that we've been talking about? Zerubbabel. Oh, praise God. May nakakaalala ng ating ang Bible character. And in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Could we bow down your heads and let us pray? Hallelujah. Far in heaven, Lord, kurara pasak and si. Lord God, we just humbly invite your presence to be in this place. Lord God, this is going to be an ordinary service. This is going to be an ordinary room. Lord God, this is going to be an ordinary location. Lord God, if your presence does not go with us. And Lord God, lives will be changed today. We're going to feel your love. We're going to feel your hope and joy. Why? Because your presence is in this place. And Lord God, we just humbly ask for that presence to move in our lives, that our lives may be changed and be better every day. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen and amen. We just give God our very best clap offering. Amen and amen. So for the whole March, we've been talking about Zerubbabel. And in the first week of March, 
we've talked about him that he's been rebuilding God's temple. And we knew that he had so many challenges, he had so many struggles. And last week, we talked about that he's, he's already there in turning mountains into plain. What a wonderful service by the Lord. At ang sabi ng Lord dun, he, he had already the clearance to do the work of the Lord. He had the vindication over his enemies. He now has the full support, maximum security, and ultimate victory. Everybody in the land was believing in God and respecting God the Father. And now, it boils down to the final battle. Why? He has everything already. He has every support. He has every person needed. And it comes down to a battle between you versus yourself. Do you have this battle within you? Well, we have everything. We have the money. We have the resources. But it comes to the final battle in our desire to what? To do what? This is our title for today, to finish the work of God. Do you want to finish the work that God has for you? Wala, walang gusto tumapos. Do you want to finish the work that God has for you? Amen. I want to finish God's work for my life and it boils down with myself. So in Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it says, In the seventh month, on the 21st of the month, the word came by Haggai the prophet saying. So this is God's word telling Haggai for all of us and it says here, Speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. So what is God telling us today? God is sending his word for Zerubbabel. Yes, the, the leader of this church, the head of this church. Yes, God has been speaking to me. But God's word is not only for me. God's word is not only for Zerubbabel, but also for Joshua. And Joshua is the assistant of Zerubbabel. And God's word for us today is also for the leaders of this church. Also for the workers of this church. Pwede ko ba makita sino ba yung mga workers ng church ngayon? So yun, yung mga hands na yan, yung mga workers ng church natin today. And God's word is also for you. And finally, it's not only for the church leader. It's not only for the church leaders and workers, but also for the remnant of the people. It's for all the people of the land. It's for all the members of this church. So God's word for us today is for everyone of us today. And what is God telling us today? Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? God is speaking about the temple of God built by Solomon. Who has saw that temple? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is, it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? So this is the temple that God has been talking about. This is the temple that Solomon built. What a beautiful temple. It's made out of gold. The chairs are made out of gold. The, the flooring, the ceiling, the walls are made out of gold. What a beautiful temple, precisely done. And you know what? In the modern times, because it's so beautiful, they try to replicate it. This is a church in Brazil. And it's a replica of the temple of God built by Solomon. So what a beautiful temple. It seats 10,000 people in one service. So very huge temple, very huge church in our present day. But the temple of God, because of, of the foolishness of the people, the foolishness of Judah and Israel, it was destroyed into ruins. So yung temple na napakaganda, hindi na makakilala. So this is the status. And God was telling the Israelites, God was telling Zerubbabel and his people, are you not burdened? Are you not having the passion? Why is our temple, why is my house looking like this, destroyed, unrecognizable? And that brings us to our topic for today, the journey in finishing God's temple. So are you with me in finishing God's temple? Amen. If you're with me, could you just give God our very best clap offering? <laughs> Hallelujah. So today, this is God's word for us in Haggai 2 verse 4. It says, Yet now, be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. So God is telling us, firstly, be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, leaders and workers of this church. Be strong, all the people of the land. So what does it mean to be strong? Is it just being fit? Is it just being having great muscles and you need to exercise? But no, what God is telling us here to be strong is that finishing God's temple requires diligence. 
So could you tell your seatmate, requires diligence. So pakita ng ano yun? <laughs> ano yung diligence? Baka hindi natin alam anong ibig sabihin ng diligence. That's why meron tayong uh, dictionary. And diligence means being constant in effort to accomplish something. And sometimes it may be even painstaking. So continuous effort, giving your all out, your time, your sacrifice, until you accomplish and finish the work. So I remember the time when I was in college. May mga college students pa ba dito? Sino dito yung mga graduating na? Yung may mga graduating. And I remember my time in college while we were doing our thesis. So we, we really need to finish it. Why? Because ayaw namin mapahiya. Nahuulit kami ng thesis. Uh, we want to graduate already so that we could work. So we need to give that constant effort in finishing our thesis. So gonna be, and sometimes it, it eats up my time, it eats up my money, and sometimes it's painstaking. Why? Because hindi na po kami nakakatulog ng maayos. Just to finish the work. But sometimes there are so many barriers in having that diligence. And number one po dyan is stress. Bakit ano nga ang katabi mo? Are you stressed today? Kanina may mga naririnig ako, sobrang stress na sa office. Di ba? May mga ganun, may mga sobrang stress na mga tao. And sometimes we're doing our work already, we're trying to finish the work, but there's stress with family, there's stress with our friends, there's stress all over, and spirituality, physically, emotionally, and sometimes it, uh, it makes us very impatient already. Nothing's happening. I could not finish my thesis. I'm not yet graduating. Uh, nothing's happening with my career. I'm not yet promoted. And then later on, we get so pressured already. Yeah, that's why it stops us from finishing the work. We have so little, limited time, and we end up being lazy. Ayoko na. Upo na lang ako. Kasi hindi ko na matapos yung work ng Panginoon. So these are the barriers in finishing the task or the mission that God has for us. But I remember a person that, that my dad has been talking about. This is Tatay Rudy. Meron ba dito may kilala kay Tatay Rudy? So yung multay ko, alam niya yan, kasi sinare ko sa kanya yan. And this Tatay Rudy, he's one of the pioneers of Church of God, Das Marinas. And for the early start of their pagsasama ng aking daddy, they've been, meet- they've been meeting, they have been fellowshipping, and one meeting, one, one fellowship, my dad challenged the whole team. And Tatay Rudy was part of the team. And my dad said, this is our vision. We want born again Das Marinas to happen in our lifetime. Are you with me? Sabi niya sa team, yes, Pastor, are you, we are with you. So if you're with me, tuloy lang tayo. Ha? Walang iwanan. Patay kung patay. And then they cried out. They committed their lives to the Lord. Yes, Pastor. Yes, Lord. Patay kung patay. Tuloy lang. Walang iwanan. So until that moment, Tatay Rudy, it's the bigger and better last year. And you know what, uh, Tata Rudy grew old, I, I think is about eight years old already, and he became sick, he had cancer, and my, my dad visited him in his sick bed, and then when he saw my dad, he grabbed the arm, he, got, he grabbed the hand of my dad and said, Pastor, sorry Pastor, feeling ko Pastor, hindi ko na matutupad ang pangako ko sa Panginoon, hindi ko na matutuloy ang patay kung patay, Tuloy lang, walang iwanan. And that brought my dad into tears. Why? Because in the dying bed of Tatay Rudy, in the sick bed of Tatay Rudy, yun pa rin ang nasa isip niya, yun pa rin ang nasa puso niya. Pastor, gusto kong matapos, gusto kong makita ang born again, Las Marinas. And that's, that's diligence, di ba? Until the last point, and I'm sorry to say, but Tatay Rudy already passed away and is with the Lord in heaven. And right now, his life has been a testimony for many people of the Church of God, Philippines. Amen? So, pwede ba natin palapakan ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Tatay Rudy? So, that's, that's commitment, that's diligence, and I've seen it in the life of Tatay Rudy. And what else, aside from being strong, God is telling us to work. Why? Because diligence requires work. But we would question today, akala ko ba, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So, why should I work? Why should I exert any effort to do the job? Eh, sabi ni Lord, by His Spirit. So, ang, ang definition po, po kasi ng work is like this. In a worldly definition, uh, work is just employment. Sometimes it's just labor or uh, a way to inherit wealth. Ganyan ba ang definition natin for work? 
Diba? May, mga, may mga employees dito. Sometimes this is just our, our way to, uh, is our being employed, labor, and to get cash. Kailangan natin yan sa ating buhay. But you know what? Work is not just for the world, but work is worship. Amen ba dun? Work is our worship for the Lord. That's why God is telling us in whatever we do in season and out of season, it gives glory to our God. But I remember my time when I was still working in the secular world. I was working for an engineering firm. And my work is not worship. Not at all. My life there is patapon. I, I go to the office very late. Mga 10 a.m. papasok ako. And then I will go home mga 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. Walang paapaalam. Why? Because work is not my worship. I would just leave them and uh, I don't care all about them. And that, that shows me that my work is just for wealth. My work is just labor and employment. Pero why ba? Why do we need to work? What is the reason for us to work? In, verse, in Haggai 1 verse 8 it says, Sabi ng Lord, Go up to the mountains, work, and bring wood, and build the temple, work, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. Here's the thing. Finishing the work, God could do it alone. In just a snap, by His almighty power, He could fill this place with His glory. He could fill this place with people. So why does He need us? Why? Because He wants to take pleasure in your life. God takes pleasure in your work. Why? Because your work is worship for Him. And that's our very purpose in living. Tama ba yun, di ba? We, our purpose is to glorify our God in heaven. Our purpose is to worship Him. And what happens when God takes pleasure in our lives? Sabi doon, then I am with you, says the Lord. Do you want God to be with you? Amen. We want God to be with our lives. And God takes pleasure in our work. And when He takes pleasure in our work, what does happen? God wants to be with you. That's what God is telling you today. God wants to be with your life. And I remember the time when, uh, when I was a kid, uh, we usually have my quarrels with my dad. Sino po ba dito yung mga tatay na? Di ba? Minsan yung mga tatay, eh, minsan di natin napipigilan na napapagalitan natin yung ating mga anak. Minsan napapalo natin sila. And that's what, what happened in my life. When I was a kid, I, I'm foolish, I'm naughty, I don't follow, uh, I lie and everything. I do all those foolish things. And then what happens? My dad gets to spank me. Pinapalo ko ng tatay ko dahil sa kakulitan ko, dahil hindi ko pagkakinig. So nasasaktan ako. And then my dad realized that I'm already getting hurt. And because he's displeased, kaya nasasaktan niya ako. So what did my dad do? Imbis na pagalitan niya ako ng pagalitan, what did he do? He chose to draw away. He chose to be just far away from me. Why? So that I may not be hurt. Kasi napapansin niya eh, nasisira na yung relationship namin and is very concerned with me. And that's the same thing that happens with our God. When God is displeased with us, we deserve the punishment. We deserve that we must be punished of our sins. But God says, I don't want to look at you. I don't want to be with you first. Why? So that I may not hurt you because I love you. And that's what God is doing for us. God wants to be with you. And let's work Work as if we, we are worshiping because it pleases our Father in heaven. And finally, it says in Haggai 2, 6-7, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little while, I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the de desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. So ano po itong pinag-uusapan dito ni Lord na I will shake the land, I will shake the heaven, the sea and dry ground, I will shake all the nations. What is God telling about here? That it is the second coming of Jesus. Do you believe in the second coming of Jesus? Are you gonna go with Jesus when you die today? Parang hindi kayo naniniwala, parang hindi sasama lahat sa langit ha. Well, I believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ and I pray each one of us, our friends and family, would go up to heaven. But I attest to you today that heaven and hell is real. Amen? Amen. I, I remember the time that uh, I, I was, it was an ordinary night. It was an uh, ordinary sleep. But suddenly, I went into a trance. I went into a dream and then this is what I saw. Yeah. 
So what I saw was very white. It was whiter than white. And then I saw those pillars. It was really huge and gigantic pillars. And there were two people there, two spirits in, a, in an image of a uh, of human. And they were really large. I believe they were angels. And the one in the center, I believe, was Jesus Christ. And there was a book floating in front of him. And I believe that this the the book of life. And when I was there, I believe, oh, Pambihira, this is heaven. I, I had a trance, I had a dream of heaven, and what and I felt so much love, I felt so much joy, I felt so much hope, I felt so much peace, and I would just like to make my next step and just go to Jesus. But suddenly I was whirlpooled back to my bed. Sabi ko, pagising ko, Lord, but ganon may kasalanan ba ako? Hindi ako nakapasok sa langit. Because I think pag nakuha ko yung first step na yun, I would die and go with Jesus already. So yun yung feeling ko. And sabi ko, wow, I just had a glimpse of heaven. And, and you may believe me or not, but it is true. Pinadrawing namin yan sa pastor ko. And that's real. Heaven is real. But after weeks uh, after that, mga one to two weeks after, ito naman yung na, na dream ko. I was in this trance. Magkasama kami ni Darius sa isang hotel. And then, I suddenly wasn't able to move and naging so much black na lang siya. It was very dark. It was very black. It was blacker than black naman this time. And then suddenly this appeared. Waves of fire appeared. So it's not the ordinary fire sa stove. It's not going up. But it was waves of fire. Then suddenly I realized, sabi ko, pambihira, hell to ah. This is the image of hell. A lake of fire is appearing. Then suddenly, a demon was going in and out. In and out, just like that one. In and out. He was appearing, then disappearing. It was scary. It had huge horns. It had huge nasungay. It was happening. And when I realized when he appeared, sabi ko, Lord, kailangan ko makaalis dito. I just wanted to shout out the name of Jesus Christ. But I was having a hard time. But when I said, Jesus Christ, I was back to my bed. And what am I telling you today? Heaven and hell is real. It is real. It is really real. And if we don't uh, accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, if our friends don't accept Him, we would surely end up in hell. Why? Because we are, we are drawn to the desire of all nations. Yan ang sabi sa verse na And the desire of all nations, some, it, we will be divided some will be choosing this desire, the desire of gold, the desire of wealth. This is what we want. We want the glory for ourselves. But what is God giving us today is my glory, says the Lord. This is what, what I want to give to every one of you. And I pray that this is what we choose in the end of our lives, that we choose God's glory to be in our lives. Because what is God telling us? I will fill this temple with glory. This is where we are ought to be in God's temple. And in God's temple, this is where the glory of God lies. So this is the journey in finishing God's temple. It requires diligence. It requires work. And of course, it requires God's glory. So now we ask, ano bang meron sa glory ng Panginoon? What do we have? What do we get with the glory of God? And in Ezra 6.22, it says, when, when Zerubbabel was already, had already finished the temple, they were already celebrating. And what are they celebrating about? Is it about their work? Is it about their skills? But this is what they're celebrating about. And they said, And they kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with joy. For the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the house, the God of Israel. What are they celebrating about? God made them joyful. God turned the heart of the king. They were favored by the king and they were strengthened. And with God's glory, now we get to have that diligence in our lives. Check na natin yung diligence in finishing the temple. Why? Because we try to be diligent, but we always fail. There's so many problems in our lives. We don't get to become diligent. Not being able to be constant and consistent in giving our effort to finishing the work. But with God's glory, God's, God gives us the diligence. And not only that, it says in verse 8, The silver is mine 
and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. This is our main problem when serving God. Ah, Lord, I don't have money. Ah, Lord, I don't have a good work. Lord, uh, I still have my dreams to go abroad. I still have my desires to do this. But God is telling us today, silver is mine and the gold is mine. All the wealth here in heaven, you don't need to worry about that because everything is mine and I could provide that to you. And it requires work, check na yan. We could work, why? Because God is giving us that wealth. And finally, in verse 9, it says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. So what is this temple that we're talking about? We're done talking about the temple of Zerubbabel. It's already done. It's already finished. But our temple is not yet finished. Why? Because the, the Philippines is our temple temple. Amen ba dun? The Philippines is our home. It is our place of worship. It is where God could sit down and be praised and be glorified. And in the former glory, the Philippines is awesome. It's wonderful. This is the Pasig River. Have you seen this time? Sino ba nakaabot pa nito? Nakita nyo pa ba yung place na yan na ganyan, the Pasig River? Diba? So beautiful, so wonderful. There was a time that we were on top sa Asia. We were greater than Japan. We were greater than Singapore. Uh, the Philippines was not corrupt. People are investing in the country. It was a beautiful place to live in. It was a beautiful temple. But what does it look like today? Ito na, the same river. What had happened to this river? Full of trash. Full of garbage. Full of corruption, the river corrupted, the people corrupted, destroyed. Wow, what happened to our temple? What happened to our home? What happened to our place of worship? Our temple is completely destroyed. And what is God telling us today? Are you not burdened with it? Is our heart not stricken to do something about this? That's why God is telling us, this is the way to go, born again, Filipinas. Why? Because born again, Filipinas is not just a religion. It's not just a hashtag. It's not just a church thing. But what? We're rebuilding our destroyed Philippines. We're rebuilding our destroyed temple. And the first thing we need to do is for our country to be born again and receive Jesus Christ. In our lives. And how do we do that? How do we change this country? How do we finish the temple? It requires God's glory. Why? Because when God's glory sits in this place, when God's glory moves in the election, when God's glory sits in this church, in this country, surely there will be change. Surely we're going to be greater than the former generation, greater than the former government, greater than the former temple, and we will have peace. Our country will be born again. And I would like to end here. This is God's word for all of us. In verse 8 and 9, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this temple. His hands shall also finish it then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Today, you may not believe it. Today, you may not see it right now that God is moving in our lives. God is moving in our church. God is moving in Born Again Filipinas. Yes, it's very futuristic, but you know what? When we just finish the work, you will know that God has been calling you. You will know that God, all the words of God that's been saying here is true, is real. And today, we're given the privilege to lay the foundations of this temple. Uh, Philippines is so big, Church of God Philippines is so big, but we have a small temple here in Church of God, Marriott, Manila. And this is still a baby church, still a starting church. And today, I'm given the privilege to lay the foundations of it. You're given the privilege to be part of this temple. An early temple. Early stages, early process of the temple. You're given that privilege to lay its foundations. And not only that, God is promising 
that you will see it to be accomplished. You will see it to be finished. You will see born again Filipinas happen in your life and just finish the work. And as God's word for all of us, you have something to do. God has a call for each one of us today. And today, this is going to be our altar call. We've been here for six months and it's our seventh month. But if God is calling you, child, son, daughter, would you just like to commit your life and lay the foundations of my temple? Would you like to commit? You've started it for six months, but today, would you like to commit to finish my work in your life? Would you like to commit to finish my work in this church? If that's you and you're saying, yes, Lord, I want to be used by you that I may give glory to your holy name. I invite you to, to come to the altar and we will pray for you. So as the worship team sings this song, you're free to come. You're not committing to me. You're committing to the Lord. The leaders and workers of the church may also come here and say, yes, Lord, I recommit my life and allow you to use me mightily. So if that's you, you're free and welcome to come to the altar and we will pray for you.
song to God. commitment to our God. It's not your commitment to this church, not the commitment to man, but it's your commitment to our God. And as we raise up our hands today, this is our act of surrender to Him, committing once again our lives and saying, Lord, here I am. Use me all for your greater glory. Can you join me in this prayer? Father in heaven, we ask for your presence be in this place, to be in my life. Lord God Almighty, I'm having a difficult time in my life today. There's so many stress, pressure, laziness, impatience, Lord. But today, Lord, I will diligently work for you. Here is my life, God. Here I am, Lord. Use me mightily your greater glory and from this day forward you alone God Lord Jesus Christ move in my life and nothing is impossible I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me hallelujah just give God our very best clap offering hallelujah Father in heaven, Lord God, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for this wonderful congregation. Thank you for this wonderful people, Lord God. Thank you for this wonderful family. Thank you for this house, for Marriott Manila, Painon, for allowing us to be here, Lord God. Thank you for all your goodness. Thank you for all your glory. Lord God, as I've said, Lord, this is going to be an ordinary place. This is going to be an ordinary hotel. This is going to be an ordinary church if you are not in our midst. But Lord, your glory is with us your glory is settling in our lives in this place and that makes the difference by none that makes a difference it's gonna be a blessing to many it's gonna be a blessing to the whole philippines hallelujah we just raise up our tithes and offering to our god let's raise them up high and could we all stand up to god as we honor him in giving our tithes yes lord god in heaven thank you for this tithes and offering Lord God, this is not our payment to you. Lord God, this is, this is our act of thanksgiving to you. This is our act of worship for you. This is also our worship to you. And may you take pleasure in it. May you be glorified in what we're going to give today, Lord God, because we're giving to you. And we want to be with you all the more, Lord God, with our worship. May you take pleasure in our lives. And far in heaven, here are your people. Here are your children. Here is your family, Lord. Use them mightily, Lord God. Whatever they need right now, Lord God, just move in their lives. Just speak to them right now and may they have different lives already, Lord God, because you, your glory is settling in our place, in our lives today. And Lord God, we claim the victory. We give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless you all.